silence and benediction o benediction of silence silence is beautiful transforming only if it is rooted in awareness awareness gives silence a depth a plenitude a fulfillment a contentment and finally an overflowing joy with awareness silence blossoms with awareness the spring of silence comes and lo myriad flowers blossom and releases great fragrance without awareness silence is utterly empty dark dismal and sad to silence has been praised for ages it is one of the most important factors in transformation all that transformation all that growth takes place in the state of silence and when i am talking about silence i am speaking of a dancing a singing silence not the silence of a graveyard but silence alone is neither enough nor beneficial silence alone can be tremendously harmful because silence by itself is a negative state it can make you more dead than you are it can destroy the joy of inner being it can be an obstruction for the growth of a celebrating soul silence is beautiful only if only if it is rooted in awareness and if it is not rooted in awareness then it is empty awareness gives silence a depth plenitude fulfillment contentment and finally a singing a dancing and overflowing joy with awareness the spring of silence comes myriad flowers blossom to spread its fragrance and without awareness silence is meaningless silence can be either of the cemetery or of a sunrise silence can be of a bird on the wing or it can be that of a corpse both are silences but diametrically opposite to one another the silence of a corpse has to be avoided while the silence of a flower has to be imbibed the silence of flower will make you a flower the silence of corpse will make you a corpse both look alike from outside never be deceived by appearances always look for the essential for the very core two things can appear similar from outside and may be just opposite to each other from within the seeker has to be very cautious very conscious on each step because the false is easy to attain it is very easy to become dead and very difficult to be overflowing and dancing with life that is why millions of monks and nuns have followed a false path they have become silent you can go to the monasteries and you will find people who are silent but their silence has the taste of death their silence is not the silence of a dancer the silence of a song the silence of a dance their silence is not divine in fact they have fallen rather than risen higher soaring upwards they have fallen so much 
that they have become just lifeless rocks. Their silence has not been a transformation, it has been suicidal. And because it has not been soaring up high, you will find all kinds of foolishness is still waiting for their opportunities to explode in the moments of unconsciousness. The foolish person can become silent. He may deceive many. They may think he has arrived. But he is simply hiding his foolishness, his stupidity and his unconsciousness behind a beautiful face of silence. I have heard of an ancient Sufi parable. It says, four persons decided to go into silence. They moved into a cave. They wanted to live in silence for three months. Because they had heard so much about it that they had become much intrigued and fascinated. They were so ambitious to gain something out of it. However, without understanding, they had brought them to the cave. It was greed, desire and ambition too. Hence, within minutes, everything was exposed. Just within three minutes, the first one said, I wonder whether I have put the candle out or not. It will be a sheer wastage if I have not put out the candle. There is nobody in the house. Within three months, the first one said, I wonder if I have put out the candle because it will be a sheer wastage because nobody is there. The second one said, you fool, you have spoken and we have taken the vow of silence. Third one laughed and said, You are a greater fool. If he had spoken, what was the need for you to speak? The third one spoke. And the fourth one said, Thank God, I am the only one who has not yet spoken. In the sequence, all of them spoke. I have heard this story differently as a child. And for now, I have rephrased different. Just by being silent, nothing changes. You remain the same within. I have heard four princes. Three princes, they were very beautiful. Parents have arranged for their wedding. But they used to stammer. So the mother told them that you remain silent, do not speak anything and let the marriage be finished. So they were sitting for the marriage ceremony. Where they were sitting there was a small clay lamp was lit. Under that a small mice was coming again and again to feed on the grains that were placed. So the first one said, in his stammering voice, look, mice is eating the grains. So the first one spoke. The second one said, you now saw it? I have been seeing it for a long time. The third one said, be silent. Remember what the mother said, you are not supposed to speak. There are many interpretations of this story of search for silence. Transformation comes through awareness. Awareness brings a silence of its own, very alive, throbbing with eternity and full of a song and a dance. It is not sad and not serious because it is not dead. Instead, it is alive. It has a dance to it. It is tremendously beautiful, positive an existential. It does not make you just a hollow thing. Instead, it makes you so full that you start overflowing with joy 
and a dance spreads out of you spontaneously. You become so fulfilled that you cannot contain your contentment within yourself. You have to share it. You become a cloud full of rainwater. You have to share it. You have to shower it. This is what a master does. He shares his inner silence in myriad ways, sometimes through the words. And the gaps between the words, the words are container. They are simply carrying the message, but the message is contained between the gaps. You can see my fingers, five fingers, that is visible. But there is something invisible as well. And the invisible is the gap between two fingers. You can hear the words, but the invisible, the subtle, is the gap between the two words. And unless you are capable of hearing those gaps, those moments of silence, when words do not overflow, instead the echo of silence is there. If your focus starts moving to that, then process of transformation begins. You can do a simple exercise. One day stand on a busy corner. You will see cars passing speeding. Car passes on the street. Then there is a gap maybe of a few seconds, maybe of a few minutes before the next car passes. What we do, we remember the colors of the car, the make of the car, the speed at which the car is traveling, but we forget about the gaps. The gap between the two cars passing. And when your attention moves from the words to the gaps, from the visible to the invisible, instead from the fingers, to the gap between the fingers. Is it widening? Is it narrow? It has, fingers are flexible. The gap can walk within a certain limits. So too, when words begin to overflow, the gap can stretch. And that too depends on what the Master wants to happen to you. The real message is not contained in the words instead between the gaps that exist between two words. The gaps are more important. They are subtle. That is the only way to connect to you. But I have to use something visible, something a toy for you. And a in the process of transformation, a moment comes when words become obstruction and only the moments of silence remain significant. And after that, when you have imbibed the silence in you, this is the fast that comes to you. You gather the fast, the energy field, the gaps from different sources. And according to your own inkaradiyat, it's a Sufi word, inkaradiyat or your inner capability, you allow it to grow within you and then these will manifest as your own growth. The two, one external element enters the womb, the another one is provided by the womb itself. When two begin to interact with one another in a state of utter silence, a growth begins to happen. That growth has nothing to do with the male element or the female element. Instead, it is transcendence. In a subtle way, it has the elements of both the elements. You have imbibed the silence, Silence grows within you. It is like the honey bee. It moves from flower to flower. Flower is a master. 
it gives a tacit message it does not speak it simply allows its growth from seed to blossoming into a flower when it has blossomed it gives a message through spring look i have come one flower blossoms then myriads of flowers blossom all around it spreads its beauty and fragrance and attracts the bees bees gather the pollen from different flowers carry it to their nest and converts into a honey it is some to it is the incaradiyat it is the way that honey bee that has collected the pollen from different flowers converts it into honey and presents it as a nectar of its own there is no trace of any flower in that completely different in taste qualities and whatsoever master is one who gathers who has gathered fires from different sources and then presents it in the own way for the transformation of the seekers he shares his inner silence and in that state beauty harmony and silence overflows as words these each word carries with itself in a harmony and silence that is why these words are mystical they create an effect on the listeners whenever you listen in a state of silence it has the capability to transform and this is what was meant by the word ancient hindu word upanishad and such overflows are scriptures all the scriptures happened in a state of silence in a state of silence this abu happened and when this was put in the form of words it become a scripture but out of a hundred so called seekers it is only once in a while that a rare one comes to know the difference between the real silence and the unreal one how can fool how can the fool within you be dropped by being silent yes it will not be expressed but it will be there in fact it will come more and more powerful expressed it will accumulate energy and any moment any opportunity and you will see because when someone begins to speak and you are hearing someone something begins to create an uneasy feeling within you that i know more than this person does and that is what happens when a debate takes place the person does not wait for the other to finish his point of view he heard a word can begins but that does not help in any way you will be unable to hide it forever therefore be aware of it imbibe the silence that overflows and surrounds a master surrounds the flower in a garden in such commune your inner unconsciousness and foolishness too will dissolve one day because in that state you will not be able to speak and when you are not speaking it begins to imbibe you are imbibing the silence you are drinking the nectar as it overflows from the flower you are absorbing the beauty the fragrance as it overflows when you see a flower when you see a beauty tremendous desire arises to express it and you can say what a beauty i have heard lousy used to go for a walk every morning one day his neighbor said told lousy that i would like to come for a walk with you lousy said i would like to go alone 
But the neighbor insisted and Lao Tse out of courtesy said, Okay, you can come with me. The next day the two went for a walk. And when they went for a walk, it was the time of beauty. But what we start? We start a whole conversation. That last time when I went to India, the sun was like that. In Switzerland, the sun was like that. So on and so forth. That moment, if you become silent, you are entering into a communion with the sun as it rises. The sun is rising. What does it mean? This, the glory of the sun, the rays are emitting. This is the phase of the sun. This is the way the sun communicates with you, communes with you. And at that moment when sun is rising, its rays of light are free from ultraviolet emission. And if you start imbibing it within, it will not only nourish you physically, but spiritually as well. Look, if you have a photograph where you can see the flower blossoming in a slower mood, you can see how slowly and slowly the flower blossoms or a blade of grass grows. When does it grow the blade of grass? How long does it take for it to grow a little bit? It is unimaginable, but its growth is not certain. Your eyes are not capable of observing the smallest the minutest grew. So when it has grown a little bit, then you come to know the plant has become a little taller. But it is continuously growing, sitting down by the side of the grass or by the flower when it is blossoming, you are imbibing the fires from that. The seed is gathering, seed gathered the nourishment from the same flower bed. But it allowed its beauty, it allowed its growth in its own way, unconcerned about the others. And lo, the flower has blossomed. And when flower has blossomed, its beauty and fragrance manifests. But it has no control to elongate its lifespan. It blossoms and the moment it blossoms, it withers. The moment an individual begins to blossom, something begins to open up its petals, enlightenment happens. But the master has capability to elongate his stay, extend his stay, as long as he wants. It is said when Buddha became enlightened, he became silent. For seven days he did not speak. He said nobody listens. Then it is said God became very worried. It is once in a while that someone attains to that blossoming. Someone blossoms. And if he does not speak, what will happen? How people will understand what blossoming is? At least they have to experience theoretically something and in the company, in the commune of the shape, in the commune of the one who is enlightened something and then allow it, the seed is planted and allow the seed to grow within. So would then be said that very rarely an individual listens. Then God persuaded him that you have to speak even for that one that speaks. Buddha had 12,500 monks listening to him on Avantapindika, where he delivered most of his talks, most of his sermons. It was Mahakashyap who understood his silence. One day Buddha came with a flower in his hand and he just after remaining, he stand up for a while, he sat down. He looked at 
each and every monk with the flower in his hand. He did not speak, just a flower in his hand. Depending on the individual capacity and thought at, and at the moment of thought expression is inner state. Each one of them at least a thought appeared in their mind. He looked at Mahakashyap. He was silent. Nothing emerged out of him. Instead he laughed. And when he laughed, communicated the message. I was unblossomed one day. And in your company, the flower has blossomed. It is symbolic of that. And then Buddha said, All that can be spoken, I have spoken for 40 years. And today, yet still that which is cannot be spoken, I hand over this to Mahakashyap now. That was the beginning of Zen Buddhism. That aspect of Buddhism that blossomed in China and Japan came to be known as Zen. In China, it merged with the existing system of Lao Tse Tao, and in Japan, it developed differently. When I was growing, at the age of eight, when words do not form, the entire Talim, the Tarikat, was infused how? In a state of silence. And it is that two hours or maybe a moment is more than enough. A look alone is enough for transformation. A look alone is to kindle the spark of love within. You do not need a longer meeting, a moment. Meeting is a moment's ecstasy. Meeting is a moment's ecstasy. In that moment something is communicated and that is indelible and it leaves an indelible impression and when you allow it to grow it blossoms into a flower and when it has blossomed into a flower it gives its message this season of spring has come gather around whatever was given to me at that age has developed has grown within in a state of silence. It was communicate, communed in the state of silence. It grew in the state of silence and lo, the flower has blossomed. It is manifesting itself in many ways. The entire message of Buddhas, whether it is Diamond Sutra or Heart Sutra, Prajna Paramit, Hridayam Sutra, these are all communications of inner silence. Subhati is sitting down and lo, the myriad flowers showered on myriad flowers. These are the rain of bliss and how we can put in the form of words as myriad flowers blossom. When you see the, in the spring the flowers blossoming imbibe it within. In your be silent. In the moment you are around the flower and you are silent, something begins to jump from the flower and onto you. It is like an unlit candle being in the company of lit. The closer the unlit com candle comes in the company of the lit one, all of a sudden a flame jumps in it and an invisible horizon, invisible state, nobody has seen it. In a blink, as if it was a deja vu, you were in a state of mystical intoxication, you don't know what moment something jumped from the lit candle and it lit the unlit one. The unlit candle was unaware but it was simply available to the one that was lit. Like a miracle, something jumps and lo, the unlit is lit. Its flame flickers in it for a moment, then it becomes steady. As it becomes steady, it begins to spread. 
its light in the surrounding. And that is what is the benediction of silence. That is what is the beauty of silence. That is what a singing silence is. That is what a dancing silence is. A singing, a dancing silence surrounds us every moment once you are aware of it.